Hello there, it's James Arnold Taylor. Ah, oh, listen to that. Look at, listen, listen. Oh, I have a voice. It is amazing. Oh my goodness, you're listening to the James Arnold Taylor podcast. And that is delightful to say because I lost my voice a, a while back. We're going to talk about that. Welcome to another episode. Let's get right to it. We've been having fun answering all of your questions and stuff from the Instagram post I put out weeks and weeks ago now. There's over 230 questions on my Instagram on that one post where I said, hey, if you have a question for the James Arnold Taylor podcast, you all keep going back to it and asking questions. Fantastic. So we're going to get to that right now. We're going to jump right in. We're going to get right to it. And so, hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. What? No, you're not Mr. Announcer. You're Hank. Well, no, but uh, Mr. Announcer Guy, he's not ready. You, you, you went on too fast. Normally, you come on the show, you go, hey, I'm going to talk to him. Hank, how you doing? Oh, is that what I do? I go, hey, 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 hey. We, uh, yeah, you do it just like that, although you don't make any more sense than I do. Uh, so where's Mr. Announcer Guy? He's not here yet. I mean, that's what I'm trying to say. Oh, okay, so well, then how do we... Okay. Hey, Billy! Billy! <laughs> Oh, yes, Mr. James, yes. Oh, so Mr. Announcer Guy is not here. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I have been texting with him. and Well, don't text if he's driving. Oh, no, no, no. He's not driving. He has a driver. He has a driver? Wow. He's like one of those fancy voice guys. He's got a driver that comes. I must be paying him too much for this show. Okay, but he's on his way? Oh, yeah, no, he said that he'll be here soon enough, and you need to talk more. Well, so normally, yes, on the show, welcome, everybody. If you're first time listening, go back and listen to old episodes. You'll understand what's happening here. But no, so you don't need to, actually. Welcome to the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. It's called Talking to Myself. It's me talking to me, which is all my characters. And Billy is the intern on the show. Say hi. Oh, hello? Hello there? Okay, now you're nervous. Well, you know, because normally you don't just, you just kind of talk. Okay. And Hank is the engineer. He pushes the buttons and stuff. Well, you want me to push a button? No, no, don't push any buttons. And we have Reginald. Don't call me Reggie. Hey, I'm, I'm killing time right now, guys. Is this what I'm supposed to do for Mr. Announcer? Yeah, just keep going. Keep filling. Reggie, Reginald, Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. Okay, stop. I'll call. Hey, Reginald, don't call me Reggie. Right, James. Yes, hello there. Oh, you said hello there with a British accent, but not Obi-Wan Kenobi. Can you do an Obi-Wan Kenobi impression, Reginald? Don't call me Reggie. Just because I'm British doesn't mean I can do an Obi-Wan Kenobi impression. Okay. Well, I was just asking. Right, right, right. Why did you bring me in here? Well, uh, no, we were talking. So, okay. Welcome. It's another episode of the podcast. And... Mr. Announcer Guy, who announces the show, because I was just going to jump right into it because we got so many things to do. I was going to have him come on, right? Right, right, right. And he's not here yet. No, he's not. His driver is... Uh... So you knew he had a driver, too? Well, everybody knows Mr. Announcer Guy has a driver. So would you like me to ask you some questions, then, while we wait for Mr. Announcer Guy to show up? Oh, you know, we could do something like that. So Reginald, don't call me Reggie. Just call me Reginald. Well, that's particularly kind of... Anyways, you generally are the one that interviews me, does the kind of hard-hitting questions on, on the show, and we haven't had you on in a while, and then maybe you could ask some questions, but I've really been enjoying answering everybody's questions from the Instagram post about the comments and things. Right, so basically you don't need me. Is that a question? That's a question. Are you asking me that question? I can answer that. And then in turn, you're kind of doing your thing, Right. Stop it. All right. I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying. So, yes, Reginald, that's a great question. Yes, I don't need you to ask me any questions right now. Well, let me ask you this, though. Okay. How are you feeling? Well, I'm, I, I'm feeling much better. So, but I, I need to get into that, but we need to get into the show. We need to get Mr. Announcer Guy here to do all of that, and then I can answer that. Right, right, right. But you were under the weather for a while, and you couldn't speak. No, I couldn't. I was at Megacon in Orlando, and we had a great time. And then I got home, and I came down with something. We we think it was a sinus infection, and it was bad. And I was for about 10 days. I was completely just gone. And so today is like the first day I actually feel normal again. Right, right, right. Are you drinking water? Oh, excellent. Okay, all right. Hey, uh, hey, Hank, I know Mr. Announcer Guy's not here, but you can, he's on audio recorded thing. Hit that button. What, this button right here? Stop it. Why? No. Hit the, it's time to drink some water button. All right, okay, right there, yeah. Okay. It's time to drink some water. 
That's good water. Man, oh man, that is good water. We always drink water here on the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. If you're new to the show, welcome. Sorry, you know, I know most people aren't new to the show, but there's always the new folks. And you know, you know, you want to super serve. You want to make sure everybody's taken care of. And so if you're new to the show, it's me talking to me. But sometimes I have guests that aren't me. The last couple episodes or a few episodes ago, I had Matthew Buds, my producing partner in my film, Hidden Blessings. And then before that, I had my daughter, Lydia Rose Taylor, who got a job, by the way. She's doing fantastic. She's got a job at a, um, a very neat place. And she is, she is thriving. They love her there. And it's wonderful. So I knew she would. She's amazing. Okay. So we drink water. We take care of ourselves. We deep breathe. You know, when I was sick, all of that was pretty much all I could do was sit around and drink water and deep breathe <laughs> and watch Top Gear. No, that's, I, do you watch Top Gear? I like the, I like the original Top Gear with Richard Hammond, and Jeremy Clarkson and James May. Those guys, fantastic. So I watched a lot of that, but okay. So is, is Mr. Announcer guy just not, I mean, come on guys, we need to get the show going. Yeah, no, he's pulled up. He's coming in. Okay. We got to get this show because this isn't actually a very entertaining opening at all. Normally I like to have something kind of fun and entertaining, but we're just waiting for Mr. Announcer guy to come in. Yeah, man, I'm here. Okay. Hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. Hey, dude. Sorry, I was late. You were supposed to ramble for a good 15 or 20 minutes like you usually do. What? Come on, man. All right. It's true. I do. But we're ready to start the show. So can you do that uh, opening thing that you, mumbo jumbo that you do? Yeah, man. Cue that music, Jerry the Music Man. You got it, Mr. Announcer Guy. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, it's the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. Talking to myself, the Jetcast Man. On today's show, Jet's going to answer more of your questions. Now, here he is, the same guy that's doing all the voices you're hearing, including this cool one, James Arnold Taylor! Ooh, boy. You know, I'm still not completely 100%. I've still got some lung issues going on. And Mr. Announcer Guy, you are... You require a lot of air. <laughs> yeah, man, I do. Okay, but you sound great. I still have that resonance in my voice, so Mr. Announcer Guy, you sound fantastic. Yeah, man, silky smooth, baby. Okay, all right. Well, thanks so much. I'm going to go now. And then he's off in his little limousine driving him around doing all his things. Okay, and there's the music. Thank you. Welcome to the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. Now we can start the show appropriately, only 10 minutes in. <laughs> All right. Hey, Hank, uh, you and Billy, nobody got sick, right? Well, no, no, we stayed away from you, man. Quar quarantine. Quar quarantine. What did I say? Whatever. It doesn't matter. It's wrong. Anyways, we stayed away from you. Don't want your stupid germs. <laughs> My stupid germs, okay. Well, yeah, so I was at Megacon Orlando, and boy, we had a great time. Many of you, were, I'm sure, were there, and we saw you, and we talked, and we had a great thing. We said hello there, and we signed things, we took pictures, we did a panel. We had a, such a great time, and then we stayed for a couple days longer and visited some friends. I saw my old buddy Jason Sorrell, who's a, a writer and an Imagineer. Well, he was an Imagineer for many years. I interviewed Jason on Tom Wilson's podcast back in the day. And speaking of Tom Wilson, my good friend Tom Wilson, uh, actor extraordinaire, he will be a guest on an upcoming episode of the James Arnold Taylor podcast. Be looking for that. That's going to be a lot of fun. The, and Tom was at Megacon as well. Everybody on the planet was at Megacon. It was a very good show. And it's now, it's, it's a long time since it's passed, but you have to understand I'm recording all these shows in advance. So today is actually February 21st. By the time this show comes out, we'll probably be... Uh, I mean, we may even be into April. So, you know, so you're all, so, so it's so funny because like I have my good friend, Craig Batts. Craig Batts is a wonderful human being, a pastor and father and, and husband and friend and all of those things. And, and we love Craig. And he texted me today saying, how's your wrist? Well, the funny thing is, is so my wrist, you know, because when the episodes came out, you all were like hearing about my wrist because it had just happened. But now time has passed. My wrist is much better. I'm in physical therapy. I, let's see though. You can't hear it. It clicks a little now and I have a little sore spot. You know, it's going to take probably several months 
probably half a half a year for the muscle to really fully heal again. It was a pretty major sprain, but thank God I didn't break it and all of that, as I had mentioned on the other podcast. So my wrist is fine. So he was asking about my wrist because he was listening to podcast episodes that had just come out, right, that talk about my wrist. So he's like, how's your wrist doing? It's like, well, that's already gone. Now I've had a cold. <laughs> so, and then the last few episodes you heard, I, in the beginning of those episodes, I was just at the beginning of the, the whatever it was, a sinus infection is what they think it was. So I sounded pretty terrible. I was starting to lose my voice. After that, I completely lost my voice, was unable to speak. And the crazy thing about that was it happened on February 12th. February 13th, 2005 was the day I lost my voice 19 years ago. And it was more serious because I lost it almost permanently and we didn't know how. But that's a whole other story for a whole other show. We'll talk about that. I've talked about it many times. I talk about it in my stage show and stuff too. So it was kind of weird because almost to the day I had lost my voice again, and, you know, that's the thing about life, right? God gives us things to reflect upon. And so the nice thing was I was able to kind of look back and see how much has changed and how things have worked out for me and my voice and such, but to always be aware that you're always one step away from, you know, these other things coming into play as well. And you got to always watch it. You always got to be careful. So at, at least, you know, I lost my voice, but I was able to get it back. And, you know, I'm still recovering even now. I still got a bit of a cough. I'm editing out all the coughs in this episode as I'm talking here when I stop and cough because I'm still not 100%, but I wanted to record an episode. So let's get to it and let's bring in, hey, Bob, hey, Bob, yeah, Bob, 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 Bob. Oh, yes, and do dee and do doo Hello there, James. Hello, Bob. So you have gathered more of the comments from Instagram where people were asking me questions. Ooh, and doobity dee and doobity doo. Many, 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 and you answered many in the last couple of episodes, but now we've got even more. That's right. And we're trying to keep track of them all, Bob. You're doing a great job. And you've got a lot of questions for me here. And you've been pulling all the ones and, you know, highlighting things for me to answer and all of that. There's over 230 of these now, Bob. Oh, and doobity dee and doobity doo, and I, I don't know how many we got through last time. Maybe be about 20 or 25. So we've got a way, we could do a whole season just on these 200 plus questions that you all have answered. So we'll see how many we get through today, Bob. And we're going to do it the same way we did it last time. I'm not going to have you read the things. I'm just going to read them because it's just faster. Okay. Oh yes. I, I, I'm just going to sit and enjoy the show. All right, Bob. Thanks so much. Oh, and doobity dee and doobity doo and bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Let's get right to it and answer some of your comments, questions that you posted on Instagram, on my Instagram. Hey, if you don't follow me on Instagram, it'd be weird because I don't know how you'd be listening to this show because <laughs> Instagram, I'm not really on X much. I, I, I you know, the Twitter X, whatever it's called. I don't know, but uh, I'm not on that much anymore. And I don't have Facebook <clears throat> and I don't have TikTok. I'm completely on hip. But I do have Instagram here, and this is how we do it. And I'm on my YouTube. I answer the comments and things in there as well. So many of you have so many questions, you have so many things you want answered, and I want to answer everything, but I also want to just be entertaining and all of that and not just answer the same questions over and over. So here's a question from Star Wars Hunter 18 it says, Hi, James. Have you attempted to be in a live action Star Wars show? Not just the voice of a character who would love to see what character you would play and how he would impact the story. Well, I've been in several shorts and fan-made Star Wars things like Kenobi, and I played the bad guy in that. Legus, Legus, was that his name? Yeah, I was a bad dude. Check out that. Jamie Costa's Kenobi, I think, was so good, and it was it really was a precursor even to the series that they did with Ewan McGregor and all as Obi-Wan. I thought Jamie was fantastic, and I got to play a bad guy in that, and that was a lot of fun. So I've been on camera in Star Wars stuff to some degree. Wouldn't it have been fun if I was in Kenobi? I think it would have been fun. Okay, I'm not bitter or anything. I'm just saying. So Dave Filoni, now that you're COO of the Star Wars stuff, put me in something, huh? <laughs> I kid Dave because he's not busy enough. Okay, no, Dave is a very busy man. He doesn't have time for putting me in a thing, but it would be fun if he did, wouldn't it? That'd be fun. I mean, he doesn't really have control. There's other people that do all that. I'm just, I'm giving him a bad time. I like to give Dave a bad time. When we do our panels, I give him a bad time. From the, I do an impression of him. But here's why I do. First off, impressions are, you know, sincerest form of flattery, right? And Dave would always do his George impression. And so Dave is kind of like the new George. So I do my Dave impression. That's all. That's fine. Okay. 
Uh, so there you go, Star Wars Hunter 18. I hope I answered your question. What was your very first acting gig you ever did? The very first? Well, when I was a kid, when I was very young, when I was in uh, fifth grade, I was in plays. And I was, so the very first thing I ever did, I've probably told this story before, but Mork and Mindy was a big show back in the 80s when I was a kid, and it was on, and I was a huge Robin Williams fan. I loved Robin Williams. I did. I, I did. Oh, hey, I did my Robin Williams impression and all that. Oh, yeah. Oh, me and all. Oh, huh. Shazban, no, 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 no. You know, I was doing the whole thing. I loved Robin Williams. I wanted to be him. So I wore the suspenders and all that. And so I was in fifth grade, and Mr. Rosa, who was my teacher, and he was fantastic. Teachers change lives. Any of you that are listening that are teachers, God bless you. Thank you for what you do. You make a, a bigger impact than you realize. And, and God willing, someday, the students that you teach will come back to you and tell you what an impact you made because you have no idea. And some days when you wake up and you don't realize you're making an impact, you're making an impact, okay? Teachers made the biggest impact on my life. They were the biggest forms of mentors. They were the biggest, they were like parents to me because I did not have a lot of parental guidance growing up. And my teachers, and I don't mean that as a, as a, a, a diss towards uh, my family. I never knew my father and I didn't have a father figure. My mother was a single mom working and was not around a lot. And that's just the truth. I was what they call a latchkey kid. So, you know, you'd wear a key around your neck on a little rope and that's, I'd let myself in and I would make my own food and I would, you know, the TV was my babysitter. My brother and sister were five and six years older than me. So they were off working and doing their own things. And I really had to, you know, kind of take care of myself a lot, but my siblings took care of me a lot as well. So I'm really off on a tangent here, but I'm just saying, when uh, so teachers made a huge impact on my life and mr rosa was my fifth grade teacher and i love him god love him i wish i could track him down now and tell him what an amazing man he was to me i've talked about him before so we he wrote the, the plays and he wrote a play called cork and cindy which was a parody of mork and mindy and that was the first acting official acting job i ever did after that i did some we did shakespeare i did some other plays I performed and in, in, in things like that. And then I got into stand-up comedy and then radio and then from there voice acting and I performed in video games and animations and things. But, you know, it all kind of built up from there. But the very first acting job I ever did was as a kid, you know, in fifth grade playing Mork. And it was it was fantastic and I loved it and it, it changed my life. Okay, Seb, Sebode, S-E-B-O, S-E-B-C-O-D-H asks, can you list top five, or however many you'd like, favorite microphones to use? I'm a mic fanatic as well and would recommend the Austrian Audio OC-18. I don't know the Austrian Audio OC-18. I will have to check that out. But top five favorite micro. Well, SC Electronics is one of my favorites. I love the folks at SC Electronics. They're fantastic folks, and they make amazing microphones that are really practically priced, you know, they, they are accessible and then they have some, you know, high price microphones as well, but they have beautiful microphones. Most of my microphone cabinet is filled with SE Electronics mics. The 2200A is one of my favorites. It sounds like a, a Neumann. I actually am on a Neumann U87 right now is what I'm recording on because I've been recording some projects that required that microphone. So when I do projects for different things, a lot of times they request that. Now, I have a very professional, a full-fledged, you know, production facility in my home here. And my studio, my booth is the real deal. So I have to have a, an assortment of microphones. When I'm on the road, I use a Sennheiser 416 shotgun mic because it's the directionality of it. In other words, I can speak directly into it and it's not going to capture a bunch of room noise. So that's why I use that. I, I use the Neumann U87. It's a beautiful microphone. Look, it's a very expensive microphone. It's like $3,400. But is it sound great? Yes. It, I mean, you can hear it. But if I'm not using this, I use my SE2200A the the 4400 is really great but one of my all-time favorite microphones is the Gefell UM70 and I love that Studio Project C1 that's a great mic I love the Aston microphones I was using the Aston Origin that's a very solid microphone 
Uh, I love microphones. They're just fun. And, and each one is kind of a different personality. And so depending on the job, depending on what you're doing, a different mic might be a different flavor. I use, I have some antique microphones that I use if I'm doing old radio broadcasting things and trying to recreate sounds. A lot of that I learned from my dear friend, Corey Burton, who's a genius. So I hope that answers some of your questions. I'm going to look for the Austrian audio OC18. I'm going to look it up right now. I'm going to look it up right now as we speak here in the James Arnold Taylor studio on the, in the booth, I have, I have a touch screen, but then I also have, I have lots of iPads. I have an iPad that handles my zoom calls. So I keep my zoom separate from my computer audio and I'm usually patching in using like source connector, IPDTL. And then I use a zoom iPad. I have my iPad I use for zoom because the camera on the iPad is really great and it, it's directional. It follows you around, which I really love. So I use that a lot. And then, what am I looking for? I'm looking for Austrian Audio OC18. Let's take a look. It is, oh, it's a very fancy pants mic. Oh, it's very expensive. It's a $1,200 microphone. Okay. Austria, Austrian Audio OC18. Okay, look at that. Yeah, it's a beautiful looking microphone. I'll have to check it out. Thanks for that question. But so, so I have a Zoom over there and then I have the other and I have a little iPad here. So that's why I was just looking that up. Okay. Wes Raker asks, I know you've mentioned before that you couldn't pick a favorite voice role, but is there a favorite moment you had with one particular? Oh, I love uh, You Can Kill Me, But You'll Never Destroy Me. I've said that before, but that's one of my favorite moments. I really love that. But I love every moment with every character. I really do. Look, as an actor, you just have to love what you do. And I love what I do. So even here, when I get on the mic and I do Mr. Announcer Guy, and I go, ooh, this is fun. I love to talk like Mr. Announcer Guy. And I love to talk like Billy because he's just so fun and he's very different from me. And, you know, and I, he's kind of the person that I would like to be, but I'm not really that person. But you know exactly what I mean. And Hank, you know, Hank is kind of that part of me that just wants to get away with whatever, you know? Like, okay, blah, 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 James. Yeah, whatever. So Hank can say the things that Jack can't say. So that's really why I do that. So I love doing all those. Reginald, don't call me Reggie. Well, Reginald, right, right, right. He's the voice I wish I could be, right? And the voice that I, I suppose my wife wishes I had because she loves it when I speak in a British accent. But, you know, I mean, so I love all the characters I get to do. That's really it. I mean, I know it sounds like a cop-out, but whoever I'm voicing at the time is who I love voicing. Okay, so Aaron DYK says, you're extremely talented in many creative areas, from directing to writing to painting and more. What is the best piece of advice you follow or can give about the creative process? Thank you for your kindness, generosity with time, and spiritual encouragement. Well, thank you, Aaron. Aaron D-Y-K, content manager and editor. And Aaron is E-R-Y-N dot D-Y-K. Well, thank you for your kind words, but what, what is the best piece of advice I follow or can give about the creative process? You know what I can say about this, Aaron? The creative process of anything, it's just like this. I'm, I'm literally, I'm alone in my house, in my booth, talking on a microphone, and I'm recording it now, and yet I know that it's going to go out to thousands upon thousands of people all over the world. I mean, I have people from all parts of the world that listen to this podcast, thanks to technology, which is amazing and fantastic, and I'm so grateful. And so I go in here, and I go, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what I'm going to say, but I'm just going to let it happen. And I think the creative process has to be that a lot of times where you let it happen and you see what comes, what may. But there's the other side of it, like from the book, The War of Art, and where you have to push through the resistance. I talk about this in my in my film, Hidden Blessings. My character, Gregory Davidson, talks about that. He's a painter. I play a painter in this film that I really want you all to see this movie. But anyways, there's a great moment in the film where he talks about resistance and how we have to push through no matter what. So the creative process is, yes, like good or bad, indifferent, however you wake up, do something creative. Because if you don't, you're letting the enemy win. You're letting the non-creative, the you know, all the stuff, the voices that would say you can't, you're not enough, you didn't win by going, eh. And sometimes we're just tired, but you got to push through, do something creative every day to help with your process, whether you're journaling or you're writing, you're sketching, you're drawing, you're recording something, you're making a little video. Even if it's something that never goes out and never gets used, you're creating something and you're making that process work for you and you're learning from it. Every, every, every single thing we do is a learning process if we allow it. Everything I'm doing right now, 
as I'm talking on this microphone. I have spoken on, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of microphones. I've recorded thousands, tens of thousands of, of times. And yet every time I get in here, I get on this microphone and I think, am I standing right? Is this right? Am I recording right? Am I sounding good? Is this all right? Am I doing? Because the creative in us does that. It questions everything. So give in to the positive and the negative of it. See what flows out of that and accept both knowing that you can become better at it all by allowing it. I, I talked in a big circle there. I hope I made sense, but yes. So what I would, my biggest advice is just let creativity abound in you and never, never take it for granted. Be grateful for every moment. Thank God for every moment. I know you're a believer, Aaron, because you, you say that in your, in your thing there. So I can talk to you in that way and say that give it to God give great thanks. I wake up every day with gratitude. I literally, I slide out of bed onto my knees and I say a prayer of thanks. And I, I say, Lord, let me be your hands and feet today because I'm so grateful that I'm alive. I'm, I'm so grateful I have my health. I'm so thankful that you brought my voice back. I'm so grateful I'm not dizzy anymore because I had experienced vertigo for a time and it was very scary. I'm so grateful that I'm, I'm even on the days when I'm feeling sick and I go, I'm sorry, Lord, I don't feel good and I'm giving that to you, but I'm grateful that I'm alive. I'm grateful that my wife is here. My daughter is here. My friends are here. My listeners, my fans, everybody is here. And I pray for everybody because this is a gift. This life is a gift. And this life is crazy right now, but it's still a gift. So enjoy the gift of creativity. And when you feel like you're not doing the best, explore it. See why. See how you can do better. And then go, great, I learned something. Don't go, eh, I stink. No, great, I learned something. I hope that helps you, Aaron. And God bless you. I'll be praying for you. Okay, said word, <laughs> S-E-D-W-A-R-E-D, said word asks, how come you almost never have Titus in talking to myself? I'm sure I'm not the only one who would like to hear Titus from time to time. <laughs> well, it's not intentional. I don't ha not have Titus. Look, the characters on, on this show are, you know, Billy and Reggie and Hank and Mr. Announcer Guy and Jerry the Music Man and all the different characters are original characters, Franklin, my agent, and Guinevere and all of, all of them that I've made up. So I did episodes in the first season of this show this podcast, I interviewed a lot of my characters, Obi-Wan, Plo Koon, Ratchet, Tidus, The Fallen, a bunch of my characters. And then I kind of went, okay, well, you know, I did that. I, I, I can't like keep interviewing them. I can bring them on, but they're not my characters, you see. So I can talk about them. I can talk to them. I can have them on. Here's the biggest thing about it though. Tidus is basically my regular voice. So and yes, I say Titus. Some of you say Titus. The correct way to pronounce it is Titus, but you can say Titus. Just don't call him late for dinner. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Okay, there you go. All right. So I I love Titus. I you know I hope they do a Final Fantasy X three and and bring him back. And I hope we get to do some more. I would love that. Uh, I can bring him back on to talk to him. But I interviewed him on an episode way back in season one. Go and check that one out if you haven't already. And uh, I mean, we'll bring him in right now. Hey, hey, Titus. Yes, hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for listening to my story. Yeah, see, I mean, it's, it, there's, you know, I don't know what I'd really say to you, Titus, because, I mean, we're kind of the same. We have, you know, I mean, well, you know, we have the same basic voice. So I kind of feel like when you listen to this show, you hear Titus, you hear Ratchet, you even hear a little Johnny Test in there. You know, I've, my voice is just that. So, you know, but I'll, I'll try to show a little more love to Titus. There you go. All right. Thanks, Titus. Sure. See ya. Live and let live. Oh, okay. There he goes. Okay. What do we got next? Titanium Amy asks me, what's the best part of being a dad? Oh, I like that. That's a good question, Titanium Amy. I like that you got a superhero kind of name there. I think the best part of being a dad is being able to see your child grow up and learn and take in life. You get to kind of see maybe how you were as a kid and to get to be there for him. I didn't have a dad. I grew up without a father. My The man I thought was my father my whole life, who was not, and I found out at 42 years of age, was never really present. They, my parents were divorced when I was about a month old. And so I never really knew him and I only saw him on the holidays. And he was, if I'm being, look, he and I made amends before he passed away. Very sadly, he passed away from COVID a couple years ago. 
uh, and we made complete amends. But he, he would be the first to say he wasn't there for me. He wasn't there at all. And then I had a stepfather who was abusive to my mother and a little to me. That was a very hard thing uh, growing up with. And then there was the man that was my real father who I never knew. I met him once when I was seven and I didn't know he was my father. I didn't find out he was my father until I was 42 years old. And he had long since passed away. So I didn't have that father figure around. I never really, my brother, who's, you know, five years older than me, was the closest thing to a, a, a father figure. And, you know, my brother did really great at being just that, but he was, he was my big brother, you know? He protected me, took care of me, looked after me like my sister did. And none of us really had like a dad present because of the divorce and stuff. But then growing up and realizing, oh, I didn't actually have a father and I didn't even know him. I was illegitimate. I'm an illegitimate child is what I am. And I don't say that with anything other than facts. But the benefit of finding that out for my daughter was that my daughter is adopted. And my daughter will never know who her biological parents are. And so I never knew my biological father. And so we have that in common and we get to talk about that. And I'm going off on a tangent here. I'm getting kind of serious. But in order to come back and around to be very uh, wonderful about it, best part being a, a dad is I get to be a dad. <laughs> you know, I, that I get to be a dad to an amazing young woman. And uh, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard being a parent because w when you're little, when, when your child is young, they're just, they're am this amazing little life and you watch, you know, it's amazing. And then they get older and they're amazing and they're amazing in different ways. And so then you look back on these pictures in this little, and I watch videos and my daughter was so precocious. She was so amazing. Everybody loved her. We would go to Hollywood studios and everybody loved her at Disney World and all of that. And she was so outspoken. She was so extroverted. She was such a neat person that I miss that person. She's still that person, but she's an adult now and she's her own person. And so I love her for that. But the hardest part about being a dad is that you, you miss these people because... As you grow up, you become different people. And so I go, oh, I miss little Lydia, but I love big Lydia just the same. But I loved that little person. So those there's so many elements of being a dad. But the best part is, is that I get to be a dad because I never had one myself. I never really thought I would be one because uh, Allison and I, my, my wife and I, you know, we couldn't have children biologically and we never thought we were married 13 years before we adopted and really god really put it on our hearts you need to adopt and you 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 can be parents because we didn't think we were good enough to be parents and then we became parents and, we, and i think i think we're pretty good parents uh, we have an amazing child and you know this is, some of that is up to her as credited to her and some of that is credited to us all of it is credited to god and so the best part about being a dad is that i am one I, uh, maybe that's <clears throat> Maybe that's a cop out, but it's, it's just the truth. I just thank God every day for the amazing life that he's blessed me with, with my daughter. So thank you for that question, Titanium Amy. It's a beautiful question. Revenge of the Sith Archive asks, I heard that you have been a voice double for Ewan McGregor in projects besides Star Wars, such as a in Christopher Robin. What is that process like compared to just playing your version of Obi-Wan? What was interesting in Christopher Robin, because he was doing kind of almost a variation of Obi-Wan. He was doing a British accent more so. But yeah, I did a lot of his doubling in Christopher Robin. And then I also am a voice in Christopher Robin. If you watch that movie, there's a, um, a part early on when there's a funeral and then young Christopher, I think, is there's a, a, a woman's hand comes up and then says, now, now, Christopher, you know, it's all fine. Uh, something, there's some type of words there. And it's, a, it's, it's an old British woman's voice. And it's actually me. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. But I got to do some of his voice. So it was different because I'm, of course, not, you know, I'm not doing the Obi-Wan stuff in it. And he was, Ewan McGregor's voice, he was, he was doing kind of a, you know, just a, a, a regular British voice. He was Christopher Robin. And so I would watch the scenes. They would play me the scenes that needed to be redone. And it was because, you know, maybe the sound was bad or it wasn't clear or they changed a line of dialogue and they wanted to be different. And so I would say, you know, oh, yes, coming right away. You know, just, and it sounds like Obi-Wan. It really does. But I've also done his voice in things where he's done an American accent. I think I did some stuff for Moulin Rouge and trailers and things. And then I did some stuff for him in an American accent for the movie Robots. 
and he was doing the lead robot in that. And it was kind of like this. His voice sounded kind of like that. So it's always an experience doing uh, voice doubling for any actor, whether it be Jay Baruchel for Jay Baruchel for How to Train Your Dragon or Chris from Ins Place for Fish Legs in How to Train Your Dragon or um, Johnny Depp as either Captain Jack Sparrow or Willy Wonka or the Mad Hatter or, or David Spade and uh, uh, Kisco says, ah, uh-uh, no touchy, no touchy. Or Justin Timberlake, uh, come on, Poppy, you know, for Branch, uh, whoever it is. It's always an experience doing voice doubling for different people, and I love it. Okay, YV the Lou, W-I-V-Y. Why the Lou L E W asks, "Who's someone you've always wanted to work with in voice acting?" Man, I have gotten to work pretty much with everybody on the planet in voice acting. I am so fortunate. If you look at my IMDb, you can see I have worked with everybody. And the brilliant voice actors are, you know, Jim Cummings, Frank Welker, Peter Cullen, uh, the ones of our day, Maurice LaMarche, Rob Paulson, Jess Harnell, uh, you know. And then the, the the women, Gray Delisle, Tara Strong, Chris Summer, Nika Futterman, Kari Walgren. There's so many amazing, Vanessa Marshall. There's so many amazing, amazing actors in voice acting that I've gotten to work with. I think I've really got to work with just about everybody. And that sounds, I don't mean that to sound pompous. I don't mean that to sound like, oh, are they great? Because we, we don't always meet. We don't always work. In fact, I've worked with Peter Cullen many, many times in many things from Transformers to Winnie the Pooh and all in between. And yet, just at Megacon Orlando, I finally got to meet him. I'd never met him. And what an amazing, sweet, generous human being and an amazing talent. Peter Cullen, of course, is the voice of Optimus Prime. My name is Optimus Prime. He's, he's got... Peter is is like me. He's, he's probably about my size. I'm 5'4". He's about my height. And yet has this voice as Optimus Prime that chills. I mean, the hair on the back of your neck stands up when he says, my name is Optimus Prime. He has such a unique flavor and tone and characteristics to his voice. It is a it's a beautiful voice. So it was really cool to get to meet him finally. But I didn't I didn't want to bug he and Frank Welker sit and Frank and I are, are old friends. We've known each other for 20 plus years. And but I always try to give them respect. You know, it's like I just don't want to bug them. They're backstage at the green room at the cons, and and I see them, and I'm just like, I'm just such a fan. So I I nerd out. But I I don't know if there's anybody I haven't got to work with. So, but it's a great question. So I hope that answers it. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of questions in here. I'm seeing from a lot of different people asking if I've ever met you, McGregor. Yeah, and yeah, I think we all kind of know that story now. I met him at Celebration London. This last year, finally, after 22 years of voicing Obi-Wan Kenobi and being the voice of Obi-Wan, even when he was not, I finally got to meet him. We were at Megacon here together, but we didn't get to see each other. I didn't see him. He was, you know, and, uh, you know, look, Hugh McGregor, I, I owe my career as Obi-Wan Kenobi to him being Obi-Wan Kenobi because I voice matched him. I think he's wonderful. I think he's a wonderful actor. I th- I'm, I'm sure he's a wonderful human being. But I, it, I think that it's funny. People kind of think that maybe we hang out. We, we don't hang out. You know, Hayden Christensen has been very kind to all of us, to Matt and Ashley and I and Kat Tabor, whenever we've seen him at shows. And we see him a little bit more. But Ewan McGregor, if he's at a Comic-Con like we were just at Megacon together, they keep him very private. You know, he's got handlers and bodyguards and all that stuff. So I just don't get to see him. So I, you know, I got to shake his hand. I met him literally for about 30 seconds. I said, I play Obi-Wan at uh, in Celebration London last year in 2023. And that was it. And and it was, you know, nice to finally get to say I, I met him and we got our picture taken together. But that's it. But uh, so, no, it's, uh, I, you know, anyway. So that uh, that was a lot of the questions here. I'm just going through. I'm scrolling through and I'm seeing that. Charles G, S-H-A-R-L-Z-G says, oh, I have no specific questions just now, but I'm very excited for more Jack Cass in my playlist. <laughs> well, thank you. That's Charles G. Okay. J for Nabby, J, the letter J, the number four, and then N-A-B-I asks, what do you think about voice generated by AI? I think that it's not a great thing. I'm not a fan of AI. Look, I'm just going to say it. And I'm sure there's AI that is recording this and hearing all of this. I think that AI needs to be some, a tool. I, I, I don't know. You know, we're, it's, it's kind of like back in the dot-com boom. You know, everybody was going crazy on all of it. Now AI has become such a thing. I think we got to be careful with AI, you know, because 
we don't want to lose the soul of acting. I think that, and same with art, you know, it's kind of like what happened with the YouTube generation, the place that we're in now, where everybody with an iPhone can be a filmmaker or tell a story. On one hand, that's fantastic. On the other hand, you have to weed through a lot of stuff to find the real hidden gems. And as somebody that is my entire life, the 54 years on this planet, has been devoted to art and the arts and entertainment, you know, hang on, let's drink some water. It's time to drink some water. <sighs> ah, that's good water. That is good water. Sorry, I've been going and on. We need to drink some water. I, I think that it's like any other tool, right? It can be used the right way. I think an art, I've, I have friends that are artists, very talented artists, and they're using AI in their art. And I think that's, uh, you know, that's interesting. It's, it's great in some ways because that's an artist with their artist vision using it. But AI generated voice, I don't like it. Why would I like it? It's, I want natural generated voice. I want, I don't want you to use somebody who's passed away's voice, uh, in AI. I think it's weird on these documentaries and stuff. I'm just being honest. I know a lot of people may not like that, but I've watched a lot of documentaries where they've used AI to generate the person's voice that is already that because they've passed on and they got permissions and stuff. And I guess if they got permissions and they're paying the people, but what you have to understand is there's websites right now that my voice is on there, you can type Obi-Wan Kenobi and you can get an AI version of Obi-Wan and you can type anything and make my version of Obi-Wan say that. I don't like that. That's not cool, right? I hope that answers it. Okay, so Rose Ring Creations. Hi, Rose Ring Creations. You're always very kind in your posts to me. You say, hi, James. I would like to know a bit more about the time you were a radio presenter. What was your most memorable moment on radio? And I hope this question is okay. And if not, I don't mean to offend. Okay, let's see. No, you're not going to offend me. I know that. But the question is, has there ever been a time where your faith has been tested and or how have you restored your faith from this moment in your life? Okay, well, I'll answer that one first, and then I'll talk about the radio stuff. Has my faith ever been tested? Yes, my faith is tested uh, probably on a, on a regular basis. I think, uh, you know, from the apostles to the, you know, Billy Graham and all in between, our, our faith is tested on a regular basis because we're human, because we have, we have sin nature in us. So everything we do has the possibility for us to kind of question, God, are you really there? You know, uh, in my in my movie Hidden Blessings that I made, I play this character Gregory Davidson, and in the in the film he loses his wife, and there's a a moment where he admits that his faith was was shaken by that. So for me, I've never had anything quite like that. But when I lost my voice to black mold, I I knew God had a plan. So it wasn't like I was like, oh God, do you not exist, or or you not? But and I knew he was going to bring me to the other side of it. But it tested my faith so to speak. It made me question things. It made me question why, why do these things happen? But we always have to remember if we're willing to accept the things and willing to accept that life is not always easy. Again, we have to know that life is not always easy. It can be joyful. It doesn't always have to be happy, but it can be joyful. We can joyfully go through even hard things. And so, but yes, we all wake up some days going, I don't know, is this all worth it? Is this real? Is this all? Yes, we all go through those things. And I, like everybody, have those moments, moment to moment, day to day. You know, you you question things. But that's okay. As long as you give it back to God and say, God, I'm, I'm sad. I'm sorry. I'm questioning right now. I'm feeling this. I'm feeling that. I, I want to know that you're really there. Can you please just give me a little sign? And so that's what I do. And, you know, he answers. He's so faithful. And then as far as my time uh, working in radio, well, I worked in radio. So from when I was uh, 17 years old, I got into radio. I went to the local radio station and, you know, asked how to get into radio and started sweeping up and all of that. And I was a DJ. I was the production director. I was the promotions director at a radio station uh, in Santa Barbara, my hometown, back in the 80s and 90s, early 90s. And then I got into radio. I, I worked at another radio. I've worked at a couple other radio stations. I worked at a 
uh, oldies station in Raleigh, North Carolina, WTRG. And I was the morning show producer there. And I was a on-air talent. And I was the production director. When I say I was the production director, it means I wrote and voiced and produced all of the commercials for the radio station. And I did that at quite a few different places. I did that at another radio station in Santa Barbara as well, which was a easy listening station, k Light for a time. And then I got into, I was a morning show producer, which means I produced the morning show for the, with the, the morning show DJ, and I would do all the production and the engineering and stuff and writing of comedy bits and stuff. And so then I got, from there, I got into radio syndication and I worked for a radio syndicator and I produced, uh, I think in 12 and a half years, I produced over 9,000 comedy bits. And they were little fake commercials, fake phone calls, different things for radio stations, about 3,000 stations across the country. They would subscribe to our service, and then they would receive a CD each week with all of my little comedy bits. And I would do all of those things. And so I loved working in radio. I was a DJ, uh, obviously, as well, on the air. And then I was also a DJ for weddings and parties and things like that. I had my own portable rig and I would go places and DJ things. And that was all so fun. But I loved radio. Radio was very different back in the 80s. It was a very different thing than it is now. And it's sad because radio doesn't have the same charm and magic as it did back then where you would call up the DJ and you'd get the DJ and the DJ would record you. And hey, what song do you want to hear? Oh, I want to hear Def Leppard, you know, hysteria or whatever. I say that for my wife because my wife's a big Def Leppard fan. And I, you know, and I worked at a rock station in the 80s, so we played Def Leppard. And so that was fun. It was fun. And now radio is all programmed and it's all kind of just computer generated, which is kind of sad. But I I wish I could do my own radio show and play music. But, you know, you need rights and stuff to do that. I would have a separate podcast that is me playing all my favorite music. And then you could just listen and I just come in and like DJ. I would love that. That would be so fun. Anyways, it looks like I have been talking for a very long time here on this episode of the podcast. We didn't, you know, we just kind of answered some of your questions. I hope it was fun. I hope it was a good episode for you. I'm going to be coming back with a new one. I think the next episode, I'm not going to go to the questions as much as I'm going to maybe pick a topic and we'll kind of talk on that a little and, and I'll intersperse some of your questions, but I'm trying to get through as many of your questions as I can. Didn't really get through as many as I hope to on this episode, but it's because I talk a lot. <laughs> so anyways, all right. Hey, Mr. Announcer guy, is he, is he still here, Hank? Yeah, no, he's, he's eating a sandwich. He's eating a sandwich. Okay, good. Did you make him an onion sandwich? Yeah, you know, I made him an onion sandwich, but he, I don't think he ate it. He's got some, you know, I don't know, rooty tooty, fresh and fruity kind of thing. <laughs> okay. What does that mean? You know, he's got vegetables in it and stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, like vegetables are bad. Vegetables are good, Hank. Whatever. Onion's a vegetable. That's true. You got me on that. All right. Hey, Mr. Announcer Guy, do the legal bubble jumbo. Talking to Myself, the James Arnold Taylor podcast is a production of YumiGo Inc. Recorded at Chat Studios. Engineered, written, recorded, and produced by, you guessed it, James Arnold Taylor. All voices are parody and should be construed as entertainment only. All music and sound effects used with permissions and licenses through Backtracks, Digital Juice, Production Tracks, and Partners in Rhyme. James Arnold Taylor's Talking to Myself, the podcast. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved. Well, everybody, thanks for joining me on the James Arnold Taylor podcast. I hope this was a fun one. I don't know. I I answered some of your questions. I don't feel like I answered a lot of questions, but, you know, I think we had a good time anyways. And I I think, again, Tom Wilson is coming soon as a guest. And we're going to just have a great time and look for more episodes. I, I'm, I'm doing so many of them. I think I'm going to, you know, just keep coming out every week. I was saying it was going to be bi-weekly, but now it's going to be weekly. And here you go. All right. We're off to more Comic-Con soon. I'm going to be in Richmond, Virginia. I probably will have already been there and back by the time this is out. But that's my next Comic-Con. If there's a Comic-Con that you go to that you want me at, then let them know. Contact CelebWorks. They're the management company that manages me, Ashley Eckstein and Matt Lanter. Tell them you want the... Clone Wars Trio or The Duchess Satine. You can get Anna Graves or you can get Vanessa Marshall or you can get Catherine Tabor or any of those folks too. All right. Or the Rebels crew as well. So let them know if you want us at one of your Comic-Cons. I'll be coming to a Comic-Con near you hopefully soon and I'll be seeing you next time right here on the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. Well, you know, next episode I'm going to talk to more of my characters. We're going to do some more talking to myself rather than just answering questions. That's what we're going to do. Okay? We'll see you next time. Goodbye.